Joining me now live on the Rich Eisen Show is a Pro Football Hall of Famer from his work for all those years with the Dallas Cowboys, the core, former quarterback of the three-time Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys, calling games for Fox last week's win in Seattle and this game uh, in Dallas against the New York Giants. Troy Aikman joining me on the program. How are you, Troy? I'm good. How are you doing, Rich? I'm hanging in there. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. What do you yeah. think of these 5-1 and one Cowboys? How about them Cowboys, <laughs> Troy Aikman? Yeah, how about them Cowboys? Uh, man, I, I'm like everyone else. I didn't expect much coming into the season. I I don't know how much they expected of themselves, Rich, to be quite honest with you. And then week one didn't get off to a great start. Romo, three interceptions there, and we're down big at the half. And, you know, they squeaked out some games. Uh, they were down 21 at one point to St. Louis in week three, and, and they wind up winning that game. And I think that with each week they gained a little more confidence, especially on the defensive side of the ball, to where – Going into last week's game, we thought, okay, well, you know, likely they won't win, but at least we'll get a better feel as to where exactly they are. And uh, and they not only won, but they dominated the game. And so, you know how it is. It, it, you know, these seasons, it's hard to really determine who are the contenders early in the season. But I think uh, after that win last week, uh, I think everyone would have to agree that, that this team is – uh, much better than than originally thought, and uh, a team that certainly is capable of contending within the conference. Well, they're hitting on every phase too, Troy. I mean, they've got one of the best kickers in the game as well, and Dan Bailey. They've got a quarterback and Tony Romo, who's not making the mistake that many people have come to either, I guess, uh, victim be victimized by him for, or love to poke fun of him for. He's been st stellar, and Demarco Murray might be a reason why because they just lean on him. So it looks sustainable, to say the least. The question is, is how DeMarco Murray can stay standing on his feet, continuing the way that he's been running the football, Troy? Yeah, I, I think that's the, the real question. And, and it is a concern, uh, you know, within the organization. It, it's not to DeMarco. I, I know that when you, when you mentioned to him that he's potentially injury prone, which goes back to his days at Oklahoma, you know, he really scoffs at that. He doesn't like it at all. He's a tough guy. He plays physical. And, you know, he doesn't want to be labeled as a guy who gets injured, but yet he's not been able to make it through a regular season. I, I think the the staff would like to take a few carries away from him. They were able to do that a little bit in the Seattle game. I mean, though, even though he still carried the ball a lot, they got Lance Dunbar involved. They got Joseph Randall involved. But uh, I, I think that's going to be important as they move through the year. But at the same time, you get into a game – on any given weekend, and, and you're just focused on that game. You're not worried about trying to preserve anybody. But, you know, all the things that you mentioned are good reasons as to why this team has gotten to where they're at. But, you know, they drafted Zach Martin uh, as their third number one pick in the last four years at the offensive line position. And, you know, there's this notion that, okay, well, we drafted Zach Martin, so now we're going to be a running team. And, we'll, you know, they had a right guard there last year, and he wasn't maybe of the caliber of Zach Martin, but he was a good player, right? I think more important to everything that's been discussed has been philosophically they have changed what they're doing offensively. And it's not because they've got Zach Martin or, you know, Travis Frederick at center or Tyron Smith at left tackle. You know, they went from being uh, the, the team that ran the ball the second least per game in the National Football League a year ago to now running the football more than anybody. And, so I think Scott Linehan deserves some credit. Jason Garrett certainly deserves some credit. But they have finally said, this is how we want to play, and we're going to stick to it regardless. And I think one of the reasons they've been able to do that, Rich, is because they have taken some of the controls away from Romo. You know, think back to last year. You know, Jerry Jones went into the season after they gave him the big contract and said, hey, we want him having more control and more ownership of this offense, you know, much like what Peyton Manning has. So a lot of checks out of, out of run plays going to the pass. So the running numbers go down. And I think the mechanics of how they're operating have changed. And it's allowed them to continue to run the football, even when maybe there's an extra guy at the line of scrimmage and it's not conducive to running. Interesting. But it does also help to have one of the best lines in the business to, to do that. And uh, Michael Irvin has said on game day morning, he said it to me privately, this line is as good. He's used those words as the one that kept you upright and blew open the holes for Emmett back in the day. Would you agree with that, Troy? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't really like getting into comparisons. I, I was asked uh, earlier today, as a matter of fact, uh, if this line is playing at the level that our line played at, and you know, we had a great offensive line, and uh, and so to try to say yeah or you know wherever they rank, I don't know, but I know they're playing 
they're playing really well. You know, it's one thing to it's one thing to draft these guys with the first pick in each draft. It's another thing to get the picks right, and that's what they've been able to do. I mean, they've hit on all three of these, and so you know they have they have run the ball well. It's taken a lot of pressure off Romo. It's really helped that defense. The defense has played much better than anyone anticipated. But because of the things that they're doing running the ball, uh, it's keeping the defense on the sidelines more, and it's keeping them from being exposed in some areas where maybe they're not a real strength. But uh, it, it's been it's it's it is a, the same style that we had, you know. And Jason Garrett has been preaching for the last several years that hey, he was influenced by the success that he saw of our teams in the '90s and how that was a blueprint for him. But yet it hasn't carried over to the way that they've called plays and. This year it finally is, and it's a formula that's won a lot of football games in this league for a lot of years. And now come the Giants into the house that uh, Jerry built that they like to say they really own. They've won every time except once coming into that spot. And just when people start counting the Giants out, this is the type of game that they win, although last Sunday night was brutal. Troy, I don't know how much film you've been able to see so far midweek, but what, what happened to the Giants and Eli last week. Well, it's funny you say that because I, I just turned on the film and I and I'm I'm about four plays in to the Giants <laughs> offense. Right so, now they look really good, Rich. Yes. But so you know, we'll find, I know it doesn't continue. It and, goes downhill from here. I don't mean to ruin right, it for you, yeah, Troy. The first but, pass of the yeah. game was really nice protection. And then after that, you know, Eli got six sec- six times. So you know, it's uh, they, they've got to be better. It, it's been a roller coaster for this team, as we know. They the the first couple of weeks New offense just looked terrible. And uh, then they pulled it together and looked good the next three weeks and rallied like you kind of would have expected the Giants to do. And and then they got embarrassed uh, against the Eagles, which the Eagles are capable of doing that. But <clears throat> I do think that what you said is accurate, that you know even though there's some different faces, it is still the same quarterback, it's the same head coach, and they come to Dallas having had success at this stadium. They've only lost one time. Uh, and knowing the Giants the way I do and having covered this team for so many years, I, I do expect them to rally, even without Victor Cruz. It's a, it's a huge loss, and a lot of guys are going to have to step up and, and play really well to fill that void. Uh, but I do expect it to be a good game. I, I, heck, I expect every game to be good. Uh, but I, I do uh, think this will be fun to watch. How about the NFC East, Troy? We're talking NFC East, and it's, it's, it's viable. It's viable. It's, it's, it's current. It's what people are talking about because the football's good in that yeah. division mostly. Yeah, you it? know, uh, I, I didn't really expect much from this uh, division going in. I, I thought Philadelphia would, would about have the thing wrapped up already, you know. I mean, I thought they were head and shoulders above everybody. And, you know, they've been able to win some games when they haven't played their best. Uh, the Giants, they rallied. They're back in the thick of it. This becomes a huge game, you know, for them. They, they can ill afford to – to go down three games, you know, this early in the season and then having lost already to Philadelphia and to Dallas. That's why I think that they're going to play really well. And then, then Dallas being where they're at. So, you know, all of a sudden a division that didn't look like it'd be real competitive has, has turned into one of the stronger divisions in all of football. Cowboys Eagles play on Thanksgiving Day for the first time. That'll be fun. Uh, before I let you go, I want to talk about two guys that are going to be in the bust room with you one day, wearing yellow jackets with you one day. Um, Favre is going to have his record broken, if not this Sunday, then next Thursday by Peyton Manning. The number 509 for career touchdowns, Troy. How mind-boggling is that to you, Hall of Fame quarterback? <laughs> well, it's pretty mind-blowing to me. Uh, you know, we've – I thought this one Favre was playing, and I played against him and competed against him in some huge games and, and then had a chance to broadcast a lot of his games. and. You know, I remember watching him when, when he was winding down his career yet was still playing at a very high level, and I said, wow, this is one of those players that we're going to talk about in the same breath that we currently talk about, you know, Johnny Unitas and, and those types of guys. And, and it was a real pleasure to get a chance to broadcast a lot of those games and watch him play each and every weekend. And, and when he left, I, I really did not think a lot of those records that he has uh, would be broken. And, you know, here Peyton is, and – and he's going to do it in fewer games, and it, it, it speaks a lot to how the game has changed. But, you know, what I always said about Emmett Smith, having had the pleasure of playing with him and watching him, you know, do what he was able to do, and now he's the all-time leading rusher, it, you obviously have to play at a high level to get to that point. But not only do you have to play at a really high level, but you have to do it for a long period of time, and you can't miss games. And so 
I, I think it's one of the greatest things as a teammate when you can rely on your teammate being there to play and play well each and every weekend. And, and that's what the teammates could expect of Favre, and that's what Peyton Manning's teammates can expect from him. He comes out, he plays at a high level, but he plays each and every week. And other than that one year when he missed because of his neck, he's been out there doing it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. He's a, it's nice when with all the negative stuff that we've seen you know, come about within our game, when there are guys like Peyton Manning who represents the game so well and plays the game the way that you hope your kids will play if they go on and play and uh it's been uh it's been a pleasure and i i don't know that you know he's going to be done uh <laughs> you know after this year i still see him playing a few more years and i think we're going to see more and more of that because of the rules with a lot of these quarterbacks i think we're gonna see a lot of guys playing right up until they're about 40 years old sure and as you know uh your former teammate is mine every sunday in Irvin, and um it, it's my job to set him up to make plays sort of like you, um, <laughs> and it's my job to sort of get to break on time sometimes, Troy. I'm having issues doing that. Yeah, good luck. Um, I, I saw uh, I saw Irvin uh, after the big Cowboys win last Sunday. When I got back from Seattle, I was mm -hmm. able to watch the, the late postgame show. And yep. He was pretty fired up about the Cowboys. Oh, yes, <laughs> he's feeling it, and when Dez, Dez is wearing his number, come on. I yeah, mean, <laughs> he yeah. ought to just wear his jersey in studio this week. <laughs> <laughs> that may come, certainly yeah. if they keep winning. Troy, thanks for joining me. I hope this becomes a regular thing. I'd love it. Hey, I love it. Thanks, Rich. You bet. That's Troy Aikman, Hall of Famer. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.